are my favorite crackers. They're made with beets and seeds like pepitas and sesame. They're so good. They actually don't taste all that much like beets, which I appreciate because I am not a beet lover, but I do like to incorporate beets into my diet. So it works out well. And I'm going to show you how I make them. Of course, the star of this recipe is the beets. These are beets that I have steamed, peeled, and then processed in a food processor to grind them up like this. And I actually pulled these out of the freezer to make this recipe because this is my favorite way to freeze beets, but you can certainly steam them and puree them fresh for this recipe. You'll also need flour. You can use a gluten-free flour blend or all-purpose regular cornmeal. And then I'm using pepitas, sesame, and poppy seeds, some salt, and olive oil. One other thing you can do, which is maybe my actual favorite way to make these crackers, is to use some everything bagel spice. And I just sub in a big heaping tablespoon of this in place of the sesame and poppy seeds. As far as crackers go, these are really, really simple and easy to make. And I'm going to start by combining all the dry ingredients in a bowl. So the flour and then the cornmeal. And by the way, I will put a link to the written recipe in the video description below so that if you do want to make these, you have a little easier time following along. I'm also going to add the salt and then all of the seeds. So I'm using just the classic combination, the pepitas, poppy seeds, and sesame seeds. And then just give everything a little mix to combine. And now I'm going to measure out the pureed beets, and this is what they should look like. Very ground up and fine. There is actually an entire cup of beets in this recipe, which is quite a bit. This technique for freezing beets and also my cracker recipe are both from my book called Freeze Fresh. And the book walks you through how to freeze 55 different fruits and vegetables, a lot of times in unique and creative ways, and then also how to use those things once you have frozen them. So if you've wanted to get better at freezing fruits and vegetables or use your freezer as more of a preserving tool, I think you'll really love my book and I will link it in the video description below. And now I'm gonna add the beets into the dry mixture and stir and stir and stir. It's not difficult, but it does take a minute or so for the beets to incorporate and start to hydrate the flour and the cornmeal. Once the dough is starting to come together, when it's kind of reasonably mixed together, I add the olive oil, just a couple tablespoons worth and then mix that in as well. And the dough will come together pretty quickly and start to form. It's just a really lovely dough. It's easy to work with. It's not fussy at all. And look at the color. You can start to see the color coming out. It's this vibrant, vibrant red from the beets. There's no food coloring in this. That is all from the beets. And I've just been mixing it with a fork this whole time. That's really all you need. And just keep stirring it until you don't see any dry streaks of flour left. It'll look like this when it's done. It's a moderately firm dough that feels a lot like Play-Doh. Of course, these are good any time of year, but I love making them around the holidays, especially Christmas, because the green pepitas on the backdrop of the red dough is extremely beautiful and festive. You'll need two of these 18 by 13 half sheet pans and three pieces of parchment paper for rolling out and baking the crackers and it should be cut the size of the pan. The parchment paper should fill the whole pan just like this. We'll need to divide the dough in half, and to do that, I'd like to pat the dough into a little bit more of a firm ball just so I can get an, a more accurate estimation of dividing it in half, and then I'll pull half out. We'll put one half on each pan. And just like cookie dough or a pie crust, start with it in a ball and flatten it out into a disc so you can have an easier time rolling it out. I don't want to add any extra flour to this, so instead of using a floured surface and flour on top of the dough, I'm just going to roll it out between two pieces of parchment paper. I find that that works really well. And I like to start by pushing the rolling pin down into the dough just to flatten it out a little bit and make starting to roll it easier. And now there are a couple features of this dough that make it really easy to roll out. And number one is that it doesn't have to be any shape, unlike a pie crust. It doesn't need to be round. It can be any kind of crooked shape that you want it to. Just make sure that it stays within the confines of the parchment paper, because remember the parchment is cut to the size of our pan and we want it to fit on the pan. And the second thing is that the papitas act as a natural rolling guide. So don't push so hard that you crack and break them, but do roll the dough out thin enough so that basically the papitas are stopping you from rolling it out any thinner, which happens really easily and naturally. Now transfer the dough and parchment sandwich onto your pan and remove the top sheet of parchment paper. We're going to reuse this top sheet to roll the second half of the dough. Now I like a nice salty cracker, so I like to take some big flaky sea salt and sprinkle it all over the top. 
And if you don't have a big flaky sea salt, you can just use regular sea salt for the top of it, but use a little bit less than what the recipe calls for for this part. Now use your hand to just pat the salt into the dough so that it sticks really well and doesn't just fall off. Next, we're gonna cut the crackers before we bake them. And the easiest tool for this job, the thing that everyone has in their kitchen drawer that works really well is a pizza cutter. And you can cut the crackers into whatever size you like and whatever shape you like. If you wanna do something other than a square, you're welcome to do that too. And I cut the crackers one way and then turn the pan and cut them the other way. Sometimes I also use a crinkle cutter to make little fluted crinkly edges, which I really like. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. One recipe makes two pans of crackers and I bake both pans at the same time at 350 degrees and they take around 40 to 50 minutes. And while those bake, I wanna show you the golden beets cause I'm also making a batch with golden beets today. And I prepared these in the same way as the red where I steamed them, peeled them and then ground them into a puree. Beets are really just so magnificent. Look at the color of this golden beet dough. It's just equally as lovely as the red. And for the golden batch, I'm gonna use my crinkle cutter. This is a tool that I absolutely love. I use it for things like making crinkle cut pickles and crinkle cut carrot coins. And of course, for these crackers, it's not quite as simple and quick and easy as using a pizza cutter to cut them, but it's not really difficult either. And I do love a crinkly edge. Just like with the pizza cutter, I made all my cuts one direction, flipped the pan, and I'm now cutting them in the opposite direction to make squares. The crackers are done when they're browning around the edges. It's really important to leave them in the oven long enough and don't take them out prematurely. You definitely want to make sure you're seeing them brown around the edges. I also like to flip the pans and switch them halfway through baking so that both pans get done evenly. Here they are looking so beautiful and this is the fun part. Let them cool and then you can break them into pieces. And because we scored them and cut them before we baked them, they just fall apart so wonderfully into individual crackers. And here is the batch made with the golden beets. I just love how rustic homemade crackers are. No two are alike. They're all different sizes. Some of them have kind of a wonky shape, but they're beautiful. And you can definitely tell that they were homemade and probably made with a lot of love. You can also see here how hardy these crackers are. This is an extremely sturdy cracker. It's not tough or hard to chew, but it is. A very robust cracker is perfect for pairing with cheese or heavier dips like hummus. These crackers will keep a really long time, at least a couple weeks if stored properly. I don't find that they get stale or anything like that. And I like to store them in a glass jar. I think that that works better than something like a plastic bag. And that's it. That is CD Beat Crackers, my favorite cracker. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.